This is what happens as we head closer to 10 o'clock in the morning, starting to transition into rain. Coming up on um, our Facebook, you can actually join us live. Thanks so much for joining us on Facebook Live. I know a lot of questions about this potential winter storm issue on Sunday. Some of us going to get winter weather. Others might miss out on it. I'm going to give you what to expect. We're going to break down all the forecast details, what the latest model guidance is. And at the end, I'm going to answer some of your questions too. So make sure that you're kind of brainstorming some ideas that you have and, you know, we'll help you plan out your Sunday. And that way you know exactly what to expect. Right now, we can guarantee you there's going to be heavy rain. There will be some gusty winds. That's widespread across the area. In addition to the heavy rain, we also have icy conditions developing in the morning time for most of the Midlands, but that greatest risk is going to be in the northern and western Midlands. Here's what's possible. Kind of the worst case scenario would be for the northern and western Midlands, and that would come in the form of significant icing capable of producing power outages. I mean, just keep in mind, half of an inch of ice, that is all it takes to add 500 pounds to power lines. There could be some limited snowflakes, mainly to the north and west. We can't rule out that novelty, but this is mostly going to be a rain and sleet event, and it starts in the middle of the country. It doesn't look very impressive. This is the weaker storm system right now, as opposed to the one off the coast of New England, which is very strong this morning, but that's moving away from us. So what we're tracking is how this storm system develops over the southeast over the next few days. I want you to think in 3D for a minute. So this is Saturday evening. Up above, we have warm air rushing through our area, but down below, there's an area of high pressure to our north that's going to start filtering in below freezing temperatures. So we have kind of two different things happening. We have where we live, below freezing temperatures, and higher up, above freezing temperatures. That's the reason why you're not going to get snow because the snow is formed up in the clouds. Once you lose that opportunity for snow, it's not coming back even if temperatures are freezing. So instead, what we have at 7 a.m. you can see is pink on the map and a lot of it. We don't often see this much pink. What does it mean? Well, it's the indication that we're dealing with rain or sleet that is freezing on contact with the ground, with objects that are below freezing, like your trees, the roadways, and power lines. So especially roads that aren't salted are really going to feel those impacts on Sunday morning in spots. Then that low pressure starts to move eastward. This is a look at 2 p.m. We are out of the main rain, snow, whatever you call it, for the eastern midlands toward the low country, and we're just dealing with some trickles. So this is mainly a morning to midday event. By the evening, we're really starting to see things quiet down. Low pressure is backing away, and there are those novelty snowflakes I was talking about because we no longer have that warm air aloft towards the evening time, so any residual precipitation could fall as some snow, but we're not expecting any major accumulations. Now, I wanted to give you a little bit of sort of like a deeper dive almost into our model data. So this is 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. The GFS, this is one of the models we use, has been trending warm, but all of the models have the same thing going on. So just to give you an idea, this red line indicates temperature and the higher up we go on the screen that's the higher up we are in the atmosphere the farther to the right we go is the warmer that temperature is so we're starting off cold and then whoop, 
it warms up as we start climbing and then it starts dropping that temperature like it should. So what does this mean? As I mentioned, the upper levels are going to be below freezing in temperature. The middle of the atmosphere is much warmer and well above freezing. And then at the surface, that north wind is chipping away and cutting our temperature back. And that is when you get rain that freezes on contact with everything. So today is not a problem. We're in the 50s. We have plenty of sunshine. Overnight tonight, we're going to notice more cloud cover. But Saturday is also quiet. You're going to step outside and you, you almost have that like feel where you know you're looking at the clouds and they're like snow clouds, some people call them because it's so chilly outside the winds high up are moving fast so it kind of gives you that wintry look but it's gonna be quiet on Saturday despite that ominous look we're in the 40s most of the day so it's not a pleasant one but if you have to do something this weekend Saturday would be the better day to do it because right off the bat at midnight on Sunday we're already starting to see some precipitation move in and as I mentioned it's pink so this is your freezing rain which means it looks like rain but it freezes on contact or sleet if that layer of cold air is thick enough some of that rain will actually refreeze the sleep pellets and fall to the ground. But at four o'clock in the morning, most of us are literally chilling with temperatures in the 20s to near 30 degrees. And it could stay that way in the northern and western Midlands for most of a day. And that's why the greatest risk for icing potential is to the north and west, because we'll likely stay close to or below freezing, as you can see in pink, 10 o'clock in the morning for Kershaw, Fairfield, Newberry, Saluda County. And then you start going to Lexington and Richland County toward the I-20 corridor and south and eastward. And now we're talking maybe some normal rainfall, but it's heavy. I mean, look at the reflectivity estimations. That's, you know, indicating how heavy this rain could be when you're looking at the yellows the oranges, the reds, that is heavy rain and seriously gusty winds too, by the way. Wait till you see the wind chills. I'll show you that. But here we are at midday, two o'clock. We're starting to see some of that blue on the map. That's your potential snowflake situation. So could we see some accumulating snow in the Midlands? It's possible. But like I've been saying all week long, the main precipitation, it's rain that freezes on contact with everything. I'm not expecting much of these flakes to move into the big towns like Lexington, Columbia. I think at the most for you, it's a novelty. But as you head out farther westward, there is that possibility. And if you're going to the upstate, it could be a pretty decent snow event for them. This clears out for Sunday night. Temperatures will be above freezing on Monday. So as far as whatever this storm produces on the ground, it's gone as soon as the sun comes up on Monday morning. Let me show you the latest snowfall forecast according to our model guidance. I promised we were going to have some higher resolution models today coming in for Sunday's forecast, and we do. And you can see it's light snow, if any at all, for the central Midlands. Maybe we get in on some actual snow on the ground for parts of the very northwestern corners of the Midlands, northern Fairfield County toward Newberry. I mean, this is not going to be exact. This storm, as you saw before, has not even developed yet. So we take it all with a grain of salt. But the concern I have is the signal for some big icing. It makes sense. Like I said, we have that cold air at the ground. We have the warm air above. So the warm air above is melting that snow into ice. And now you have something wet to refreeze all over everything. And so there is that risk in red. You can see Newberry, Fairfield County. Don't use the specifics, but just the general guide that the farther north and west you go, the better the chances that we're actually looking at accumulating ice on things. And it really doesn't take a lot, just a very thin coating. And you're already sliding as soon as you step out on pavement. Let me talk to you about the temperatures. This map could be a little bit confusing because the temperatures are so low on it, but this is your wind chill for six o'clock in the morning on Sunday. So Winsboro feels like it's about 10 degrees outside. Actual temperatures will be close to freezing, but when you factor in those gusty breezes, this is what it feels like all across the Midlands. We are expecting things to totally transition into rain very early on in the Eastern Midlands, but temperatures are still gonna feel like the teens and 20s with rain. So this is going to be a seriously gloomy forecast for sure on Sunday, no matter where you are. But again, north and western Midlands, 3 a.m. through the midday. We are expecting icy conditions here. I think you really do need to prepare for that possibility for some power outages just because of the wind gusts alone. And with feels like temperatures in the teens, it's going to be cold. So blankets aren't a bad idea either because without the power, a lot of us lose heat too. Um, and so the road's very slippery anywhere you go. And so so that's going to be your biggest risk in the northern and western Midlands is your highest threat for that issue. For the central Midlands, though, we can't rule it out. Your time at this risk is a little bit lower. It's mostly just toward the a.m. hours. We'll keep that icy condition threat as possible for you in the central Midlands. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour still. 
still very cold, still could see some power outages, but I'm less concerned toward Columbia than I am towards Winsboro, toward Newberry, towards Saluga. I think the concern is higher there that we deal with an icing threat. I think here in you know, Columbia, toward Lexington, toward Irmo. If we sit tight Sunday morning, we might be okay by the afternoon, but I'm not guaranteeing it because every degree counts. This is gonna be one of those days where we're all just sitting and watching that thermometer. And even if it says 33, 34, you know, temperatures aren't going to immediately melt that ice if there's any that forms in the morning. So it's gonna be one of those days where I really think the atmosphere favors very icy conditions, especially farther north and west. Of course, plenty of ways you can keep up to date with us on WLTX.com, on Facebook, at my Facebook page, as well as where you're watching here on WLTX's Facebook page, and on Twitter, I'm Alex Calamia WX. And I promised I would give you some time to ask some questions. So, you know, let's go for it. What are we seeing out there questions? Well, Alex, there's a lot of people taking in the information you ha have provided. What any time in weather, it's always a fluid situation. So right. small shifts in this track that can change over the next 48 to 72 hours can make big differences for what you may get and what you may not get. You're exactly right, um, Adam. That is such a good point. And I know we have some, you know, weather enthusiasts out there who know the models and know, okay, this is what the GFS is saying. This is what the Euro is saying. This is what our in-house model, it's a higher resolution model, is showing. And you can see that very sharp cutoff. And actually, I'm going to show it to you a little bit better with this other graphic, just how you know, every single mile is going to make a difference. I'm going to just give it a second to roll through so we get back to Sunday and you can see how important that shift in the storm track could be. So here we are Sunday morning at 4 a.m. It's 46 in Hilton Head. It's 28 here in Columbia, 25 in Rock Hill. But that gradient is really going to grow. So I'm really glad you mentioned this, Adam, because look at the temperature in Hilton Head at 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, 61 degrees. Wouldn't even be surprised that there were thunderstorms toward the low country, 33 in Columbia, 52 Charleston. That is an hour and a half drive. And you know, this may already sound impressive enough that temperatures are going to vary so widely, but let's consider the fact that this storm literally doesn't exist yet. So we're going to be doing some now casting for sure, as we call it on Saturday night and Sunday morning, where we're actually watching to see what is in place. So where everything we give you is an estimate. It's what to prepare for, but it really won't be until all the ingredients are already in the oven that we finally know what we're going to get baked out of it. What other questions are we seeing? At this time, there's not, uh, the National Weather Service has issued some winter weather advisories, right. but not at this time for the entire Midlands, correct? Right, so as of nine o'clock this morning, the winter weather, uh, the winter storm watch is in effect for Kershaw County, for Fairfield, for Newberry. So those are the only three counties in our area that are currently under that watch. And again, this potential is for Sunday morning. So even though you're probably seeing on your phone apps or something like that, winter storm watch, we're still good today. We're good all day tomorrow. The threat is for Sunday. So the reason why you're under a watch is because of that potential, but it will very likely, unless something changes in the forest, Cast be upgraded to a warning as we get closer. And we haven't seen the National Weather Service issue these winter weather alerts since I believe 2018. So it's been a long time since we've even had the risk for winter weather in the Midlands. So this alone is pretty unusual territory in recent years for us, Adam. We have a lot of people asking about specific areas. So again, go, let's go through the Northwest, the right. Central and the Eastern and Southern Midlands right. for many of our viewers. Sure, so yeah, and we can really practically narrow it down to at the very least county level, if not even street level for some of us. So the Northern and Western Midlands has that greatest risk for icy conditions. We are expecting a period of icy conditions, mainly toward Northern and Western Kershaw County. You see all of Fairfield County underneath that blue, Newberry County, you're all under that blue, Saluda, you're under that blue. And then it's kind of like a little bit of a blush as you head into um, Western North Carol, uh, Western, Richland County, North Carolina is all the way up there, uh, Western Richland County into Western Lexington County. So we're kind of on the periphery. I drew this map myself based on the model guidance that I was seeing and based on what the trends are that I know. Basically what we're expecting is a pool of cold air to sit Interstate 20 corridor westward 
and that pool of cold air is the reason for the icing, the slick conditions. It's going to be a mainly rain event with sleet mixing in, maybe a few snow flurries, so it doesn't look that different necessarily from what you might expect until you're seeing all of the ice everywhere because of how cold temperatures are. Now for the central Midlands, now we're focusing mainly mostly Richland, Lexington, Aiken County into parts of Kershaw County. You're still in on this for Lee, for Sumter, for much of uh, Calhoun County and toward Orangeburg County. You have the possibility for icy conditions, but the duration of time at or below freezing is going to be a little bit slimmer there, so your risk is a bit lower. Gusts still going to be a huge issue, still going to be very cold Sunday morning, a very raw day. We still have some power outage issues, not just because of the ice, but there will be some breezy times too. So there are multiple hazards out there. We're worried about the ice for the north and western Midlands. We're worried about heavy rain everywhere that could produce localized flooding. The cold temperatures marginally at or below freezing, not just creating ice issues, but creating major wind chill issues. And it takes literally nothing to slip and slide once you have ice covering your sidewalk, covering your roads. I grew up in this. I have slip and slided my whole entire life. And I will tell you that it takes next to nothing. So seriously, if you can avoid being outside on Sunday morning, even if temperatures are marginally close to freezing, those overpasses, for example, cool down a lot faster than the ground does. So you might be driving along thinking everything's great, but then you go over an overpass and all of a sudden things are icy and not so great. Are we seeing any other questions, Adam? Th this will be my last question okay. that comes from Amanda, who, who is asking who might actually be seeing some accumulating snow. Her grandson has never experienced snow and wants to go snow chasing. Now, while we're not necessarily wow. endorsing travel in some of these conditions, if by chance somewhere there might be some accumulating snow, where would that be? Right now, if you're heading to the mountains, you are going to get some snow. And if you want to head out there early Saturday, then you're going to be dealing with, uh, you know, your first snow for some people, for sure. Um, if, you, if you're heading in out there from the Midlands and haven't seen the snow yet, there is a possibility in Fairfield, Newberry, Saluga, maybe, you know, marginally Richland, Lexington County gets a little bit of white on the ground but you can see that cutoff is pretty quick as you head into the eastern midlands so i certainly wouldn't guarantee any accumulating snow in the midlands but for many many people i mean we're talking seven years now that we haven't seen significant snowfall in the midlands this is our first real chance that we have had and again this is mainly going to be an ice event with rain but just so you know there will be snow out there in parts of south carolina and quite a lot of it as you head to the greenville area charlotte metro mostly north and west of the charlotte metro area towards those higher elevations we're talking plowable snow in those parts of the southeast so somebody's going to get in on quite a big and it's a great question amanda and uh, we're going to continue to do this really throughout the next couple of days. I think our next Facebook Live is going to be at 1230, if um, I remember right. And as we get closer to the storm, we're going to know more and more specifics. So you're going to want to stay tuned. For now, though, I'm meteorologist Alex Calamia, and I'll leave you with my web pages so that way you can stay up to date.